first episode of Whining by the Campfire. I'm Adventure Girl, and I think I'm going to make this a regular segment on the channel. So I hope you'll tune in and watch. Um, myself, in my other life, I have um, about 15 years experience in the wine industry. So considering that I enjoy doing all of this stuff outdoors and in the backyard, and there are so many uh, channels out there where people talk about the beer or the whiskey, that they're enjoying and I haven't seen too many things on wine so I thought I would add a segment to the channel for that I got a really positive feedback from people when I uh, queried the community and and asked if anyone would be interested in this so uh, let's get right to it uh, the first uh, sip I plan to introduce you to in my little uh, wine mug my outdoor wine mug. I don't need to keep this cold or warm. This is a port wine. If you're not familiar with a port wine, it's one of the fortified wines. It's made exclusively in uh, the Douro region of Portugal. And uh, this is one of my favorite winter sips. I will show you at the end of this uh, the wine in a, in a clear glass so that you can see the color and the clarity and uh, what I'm talking about here about what's in the bottle. I'll be sipping this in the evening around the fire, but um, I'm pretty certain you won't be able to see what the color is like and be able to see what the texture is like. So I wanted to be able to show it to you here in the daylight. Um, so this is a, a Tawny Port by Sandman. Uh, this is a, a classic producer uh, of, um, of port wines. And my particular winter sip, my favorite, uh, is a just a basic tawny port and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later but I wanted to be able to swirl that around a little bit and show it to you Let's see. it's beautiful amber color such as Sherry, Madeira, um, and Port. Uh, port in particular comes in um, a, a few different styles. There's a white Port, but most of the Ports are made from red grapes. Uh, as a fortified wine, that means that the um, alcohol by volume uh, ratio is in excess of um, 15%. It's somewhere between 16 and 18% is the average for a, a Port wine. So, uh, they tend to be full-bodied. That's a full-bodied mouthfeel when you, when you drink the wine. It has the consistency or the, the weight of, say, cream versus whole milk or 2% or milk, if that'll give you an idea. Uh, and as a fortified wine with the higher alcohol level, it does give you a little bit of a warm all-over sensation when you're drinking it out in 30-degree weather. So uh, my favorite style of port is the tawny port, and uh, it's tawny because of the uh, aging process tends to oxidize the grapes to a, a nice amber or dark amber uh, color. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe that. Uh, and ports tend to have um, a raisinet kind of um, flavor to them, like uh, well-ripened grapes. Uh, this this uh, Sandman Port, which is, it's a very reasonable bottle. It goes for uh, under $15 in most um, big chain stores and maybe a, a buck or two more if you get it in an independent. But this is a commonly uh, found port wine in a lot of stores. Uh, it's, it's a very well-established name. It's very reliable. So if you ever want to try one, uh, Sandman is a, is a very good one to try. Uh, you can also get the style in a... Um, a vintage port. Port, similar to um, like champagne, is uh, only made in one place in the world where it's officially called that wine. And it's not made every year as a vintage. So uh, the grapes can be sourced from multiple years, harvests, and yields, and uh, made in that house's style. 
and in an exceptional year, just as they do in Champagne, they may declare a, a vintage year, and then you would see that on the bottle. Otherwise, you tend not to see uh, a year on the bottle. But it's very common to find uh, aged ports that are 10 years old, 20 years old, and some of them are quite reasonable. Otima is a, is a, a, a pretty decent one. Wars has one. Um, yeah, give this a try if you uh, think you might like that kind of style. It, it's a good sipper. That's why I chose it to have around the fire for the first episode. Uh, if I were going to have some kind of food with it, me personally, I like it with strong cheeses, Stilton's, um, Roquefort, the stinky cheeses. So uh, other than that, I prefer it as a, a nice winter sip. So the, in, in future episodes, wine accoutrements. How do you transport it? What do you put it in? How do you drink it? Um, I've seen uh, uh, some people on, in the forums talk about uh, the beer is self-contained, so that's easy to transport. And to people who drink whiskey, it's not in a, a volume that someone might consume wine. So, uh, you know, wine is bulkier, but uh, there's a lot of equipment out there to make you uh, comfortable transporting it into your outdoor woods backcountry experience. smell of the fire, the aroma of the wine, my nose, the icy snow around. This is a nice winter experience.